displays are everywhere. In our hands, on our wrist, at home, at work, in our cars, everywhere. How many hours per day do we spend in front of different displays? Isn't it more than the time that you spend with our beloved ones? How many of you remember our moms telling us, don't sit so close to the TV, it's bad for your eyes? How many? Well, all of us. So well, 20 years later, this happened. <laughs> I am a computer scientist, specialized in computer vision. I've always had this passion of using my skill set and change the world. First, I thought I'm going to do that with my master's thesis, and then PhD. Well, none of those happened. <laughs> then I thought, maybe I should start from myself and work on some of my bad habits of interacting with technology, because I spent a lot of time interacting with technology. By the way, my husband and I have the bad habit of going to bed using our displays. And this is like us going to sleep every night. So the goal of the display industry is to present us with content, which is as close as possible to what we see in real world. That's why we have 3D displays, high dynamic range displays, curved displays, bigger ones, more colorful, holographic, all kind of them. But at the end of the day, the end recipient of the displays are our eyes. How much do we know about our eyes? Did you know that our visual system is very complex and it stretches the whole length of our brain? Recently, a lot of physiologists have done research on the side effects of being exposed by displays more than four or five hours a day. There are three main categories of side effects I'm going to briefly talk about. The first one is eye fatigue. We have all experienced more or less getting fatigued in front of this place, but why does that happen? Our eyes are capable of perceiving enormous amount of uh, information. Brightness, colors, 3D, but when we force them to focus on a 2D screen, which is in a specific distance from us, they are challenged to fill in for the missing information. That's one of the reasons we get fatigued. The second, um, side effect is insomnia. Maybe you've heard about how using your displays before going to sleep will, might cause insomnia. But why is that? Um, in the dark, our eyes work completely differently from the way they work in a normal room lighting or a bright environment. But did you know that our displays are not taking that into account? They are built under the assumption that we are always in a room lighting. What happens is we get, yeah, when you have your displays in your hand going to sleep, like I always do, um, in the dark, our neurons are more sensitive to the color blue. They are more responsive to the blue. And blue light is what controls our melatonin production, which controls our sleep cycle. So when we are exposed with the light blue, our body thinks it's still daytime and doesn't go through the adaptation to get prepared for sleep. So what can we do with this knowledge? Like, now we know about it, but so what? Can we, as consumers and end users, voice our concern and ask for display industry to adjust for this? The answer is yes. In 2015, there were a lot of articles uh, in conferences, blogs, um, forums about the side effects of using displays before going to sleep. That's why some well-known mobile manufacturers took that into account and added a mode that turns your displays into orange at night. Well, there, that's a consumer awareness. That is consumer pressure in the direction that the technology takes. Even though that's a point solution, and it's not an ideal solution, but it's a very quick response from the industry to the consumer concern. Going back to the side effects, the third one is a more severe one. This is what Dr. Victoria Dunkley, which is a very well-known psychiatrist, calls electronic screen syndrome. Electronic screen syndrome is a dysregulation in the brain. 
This dysregulation results in an inabil inability to modulate one's mood, attention, and correct respond to the environment. And children are more in danger of this risk. It happens because interacting with displays for more than four or five hours a day shifts our nervous system into a fight or flight mode. In simple words, interacting with displays, too much display time, literally damages our brain. So what is the solution? What can we do? We cannot stop working. We cannot stop using our displays or, or cell phones or laptops. The answer is not that difficult. Physiologists are the ones who did all this great research on how our eyes work and the side effects. But technologists are the ones who are building the displays. We need to bring physiologists on board to work with technologists to build healthier products. Having this in mind, I co-founded a company two years ago with my physicist co-founder to find a solution. We built a multidisciplinary team of experts, physiologists, software engineers, and hardware engineers to come together and find perfect solutions. Early on, we determined there are three main influencers on the way we see and interact with our displays. The first one is the environment lighting. We talked about this, and displays are not taking this into account. Our eyes totally work differently in different lighting uh, environments. The second one, is our personalized visual system. We have unique vision, and each of us have unique visual system. Our age, culture, background, uh, gender, all of those affect the way that we see. 10% um, of men are colorblind, and some women see more shades of color. Sorry, that's the, the way it is. <laughs> our eyes deserve custom fit displays the same way that our feet deserve the right size of shoe. The third influencer is the technology itself. So we are, we are limited to the technologies and the platforms. So we need the hardware engineers to come on board with us and adjust our software solution, the personalized software solution, to work on different platforms. Now I want to walk you to a real example that we have probably experienced, all of us. In the dark, when your screen is adjusted to the dark, you lose the content visibility. So with the current technology, this is what you see in the dark on a dimmed display. Using our multidisciplinary solution, this is what you see. The same story is valid for a sunny day. This is what you see on your screen in a sunny environment with the current technology. And with our multidisciplinary solution, this is what you see. It will take us a couple of years to get into all the displays and get to mass production. But meanwhile, why would I do, what would I do to work on some of my bad habits? So first, take 20-20-20 rule. I would, after every 20 minutes of working with a screen, I would take 20 seconds looking at somewhere which is 20 feet away. Two. Adjust, take a second and adjust your screen brightness with the environment. It's simple. When you're in the dark, it should be dark. And when you're in a sunny environment, your screen brightness should be maximized to put less pressure on your eyes. Three, I will try to keep at least one meter distance from the screen. Four, I will, well, I hesitate this one. I will try to not to use my screen or display or laptop before at least one hour before going to sleep. And if my husband manages to do the same thing, maybe eventually we get some sleep. <laughs> and five, and the more importantly, as end users and consumers, I want to make sure that I always have a positive contribution to the path that technology takes. By standing up and demanding healthier and more efficient products. Going back to my childhood dream of changing the world, well, who knows? Maybe. I managed to change a small part of it after all. Thank you.